My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the interior of St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg, Russia. I wish I could just pick you up and transport you to this place with me today because it is difficult to really explain how beautiful it is. You have to see it with your own eyes. This cathedral is built of more than 300,000 tons of materials. Precious stones like malachite, 16 tons of it. Deep blue lapis, 1,100 pounds of it. 20 different kinds of marble from all over Russia and all over Europe and more than 881 pounds of gold are used in the ornamentation and the decorations of this cathedral, which was the central cathedral of the Russian Empire for nearly half a century. This room is so big, it could accommodate 14,000 people in its 116,000 square feet. My friend, it is just magnificent. But the interiors of this building are really nothing in comparison to your spiritual interiors and mine. In fact, the Bible says that what God did inside us in the new birth was so wonderful that when he was finished, he sealed us with the Holy Spirit as his stamp of approval. We read about that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, where the Bible says God sealed us with the spirit of promise. It was God's way of saying what I've done in you is so magnificent, I'm going to stamp you with my own seal of approval. Our spiritual interiors are simply magnificent. I really like St. Isaac's Cathedral. I personally believe it is the most lavishly decorated cathedral anywhere in the world. And believe me, I've seen a lot of cathedrals, but none compared to this. But even this is very dim compared to what is inside me and what is inside you. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm going to talk to you about the very fact that you are God's masterpiece. You might say, what? I'm a masterpiece? That's right. That's exactly what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It's going to be great, so stay with me all the way to the end of the program today. But I'm offering you my brand new series, which is called You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. If you've been badgering yourself, stop it. It doesn't matter who you used to be. What matters is who you are now. And now you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You just need a revelation of who God has made you to be. My friend, you really are a walking sanctuary. God lives inside you. And I want you to have the whole series called You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts and it comes in multiple formats with a study guide. This is such a powerful series. It's really life transforming. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called A Life Ablaze. I know you want to be ablaze for Jesus to the end of your life. You just need to know how to stay on fire. And that's what this book will teach you. It will show you what kind of spiritual fuels you need to regularly inject into your spiritual fire so you remain a life ablaze. Order yours today. And if you're not a partner, would you please pray about joining us as a partner? A partner is someone who regularly supports our ministry financially to help us take this teaching to people all over the world that are crying out for teaching they can trust. And together with our partners, we're taking the teaching of the Bible, the verse by verse teaching of the Bible to people that are praying for it. And the moment you become a partner, we'll send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. We always send these books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And remember that if you need prayer for anything, we are here from you and we want to be able to pray with you. Just call us or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to put our faith together with you for whatever it is 
that's on your heart right now. But hey, reach for your Bible. I have my Bible. And today we're going to return to Ephesians chapter 2. And today I'm going to show you that you really are God's masterpiece. But we're going to return to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 and quickly review the first three verses. And when you come to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, the Apostle Paul is showing how utterly impossible it was for any of us to get saved if God himself did not start the process to bring us to Christ. This is why Jesus said in John 6, 44, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. It is a supernatural work of God for a person to get saved. We are told in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14 that those that are spiritually lost are in the sleep of death until Christ nudges them, shines on them, and begins to wake them up. And praise God, he shined on me and he shined on you and the Spirit brought us to a place of salvation. But when you understand Ephesians chapter 2, you really see how utterly impossible it is for anybody to get saved by themselves because before the grace of God touches us, we are spiritually dead. That is what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's look at it together. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I want to say again that if you're reading from the King James Version, the words hath he quickened are italicized, which means they were supplied by the translators and they are not in the Greek text. The Greek simply says, and you who were dead in trespasses and sins. It begins very abruptly describing our condition. And just like a dead person does not have the ability to respond, when a person is dead in sin, they can't find God, they do not desire God, nothing in them responds to God, and this is why salvation is such a miracle. Salvation occurs because God comes to you, not because you go to God. It is the work of grace to wake you up and to bring you to Christ. Then when you come to verse 2, it says, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Well, today... I want to cover the very end of verse 3 a little better than we did yesterday because we were moving so fast. Let's look at verse 3 again. He says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. In this verse, Paul says we were all a part of the gang, and this is important because there's always someone who says, Well, I was bad, but I wasn't that bad. But Paul here says, among whom we all also had our conversation in times past. You may not realize how bad you were before you came to Christ. My friend, you were spiritually dead. And in fact, you were so spiritually dead, this verse says you were dominated by what? By the lust of the flesh, and you fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That word nature in Greek is the word phusis. Now I'm going to read to you directly from my notes because I want you to really understand what this word nature means. It is the Greek word phusis, which describes nature or an inherent nature, an inborn instinct or something that you received by birth, which means sin is not something you are taught to do. You sin because you are born a Center. Yesterday I gave the illustration that when I was a boy, my father had an aquarium and he had guppies, little fish. And from time to time, those guppies would give birth to new fish. And it was amazing. When I saw those little tiny guppies being born, no one had to give them swimming lessons. They just immediately begin to swim like fish. You know why? Because they are fish. No one has to teach a fish to swim because it is the nature of a fish to swim. Likewise, when people are born, no one has to give them sinning lessons because they are born with a nature of sin. That is precisely what this verse says. And by nature, they sin. Now, the verse goes on to say, we were by nature the children of wrath. What in the world does that mean? Well, the word wrath 
is a very terrible word. It is the Greek word orge, which describes something so bent, so twisted, that it does not deserve to exist. Something so warped that it deserves to be destroyed, which means mankind without God is unable to fix himself. He cannot reform himself. Mankind, because of sin resident in him, has become twisted, has become bent, has become warped, is not reformable, is not fixable. In fact, mankind, without the help of God, simply deserves to be eliminated. But God got involved, and that's what the next verse says. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he hath loved us. In verse 4, Paul begins with the word but, and this word but in verse 4 is very, very important because it is the Greek word day. This word day is an emphatic break in the text to emphasize the next statement. In verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3, Paul has been describing our lost, unsaved condition. We were spiritually dead. We could not be fixed. We could not be reformed. There was nothing about us that could be amended or made better. But God got involved. And now in verse 4, Paul uses the Greek word day, but. It's almost like a pause in the text to let everyone get ready for the good news they're about to hear. But God, who is rich in mercy. Well, how much mercy does God have? This word rich is the Greek word plusias. The word plusias is one of the most wonderful words in the New Testament. This word rich, the Greek word plusias, describes wealth so great it cannot be tabulated. It is abundant wealth, vast wealth, extreme riches, incredible abundance, magnificent opulence, extravagant lavishness. It is the very word used by Plato to say no one was richer than the legendary King Midas. And now this word is used to describe God as being one who is rich in mercy. How much mercy does God have? Well, this verse says he is plusias, which means God has so much mercy. It may be that God himself does not know the extent of his mercy. He can't tabulate it. It is wealth beyond imagination. It is incalculable riches when it comes to the issue of mercy. Or one expositor says, God is filthy, stinking rich when it comes to the issue of mercy. He is rich beyond imagination when it comes to how much mercy he has. And that's good news for me. And my friend, that is really good news for you. Praise God that he is rich in mercy. Well, what does the word mercy mean? The word mercy is the Greek word elios. It can be translated pity. It can be translated as the word compassion. But God doesn't just have pity on us. God has compassion. And in this particular case, this word mercy, here translated from the Greek word elios, describes a gut-wrenching emotion that compels one to action. And here's what we find. God made the human race And we read in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only son for our salvation. God didn't just look at us and say, oh, they're such a mess. Oh, what am I going to do about them? And wring his hands. God was moved to action. That is what mercy does. And that's what we find in this verse. God did not just sit in heaven and say, oh, mankind is so flawed, so defective, so warped, so bent, so twisted, so dead in sin. God said, I love them so much. I have to do something about it. And out of his great, great, abundant wealth of mercy, God was moved to action to do something for me and to do something for you. He sent Jesus into the world to initiate what we could not initiate by ourselves. Wow. In fact, it says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love. The word for in Greek is the word dia. It really means in order to satisfy his great love. The word great is the word polos. The word polis here is very important because this word polis describes something that is enormous, something that is incalculable. The word love is the Greek word agape. Oh, thank God for the agape love of God. The word agape depicts a divine love 
that gives and gives and gives even if it is never responded to, thanked, or acknowledged. God is the initiator of this love, and it does not depend on us. God is the one who initiates. That's what agape love is. It is a divine love that initiates and moves toward a recipient. A love so profound that it knows no limits or boundaries in how far, wide, high, or deep it will go to show love to its recipient. It is a sacrificial love that moves the lover to action. And when you come to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, it literally means, but God who is filthy, stinking rich when it comes to how much mercy he has, was moved to action in order to satisfy his incalculable, profound love that he had for me and he had for you. Because we couldn't fix ourselves. God went into action to do for us what we could not do by ourselves. We were spiritually dead. We didn't even know we needed help, but we needed help. So God was moved to action to do something for us. And that is why Ephesians 2 verse 5 continues to say, even when we were dead in sins, dead, necros, we were not thinking about God, seeking God, we were spiritually dead. He has quickened us together with Christ. And that's why he adds these words, by grace, ye are saved. God was the initiator. And my friends, what we have received from God is a result of the grace of God, which God put forth on our behalf. And when you come to Ephesians 2 verse 7, it says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The word exceeding is a Greek word, hooper, ball. Listen to this. It's a compound of the word hooper, which describes something that is excessive or something that is beyond and the word balo, which means to throw something like to throw a ball or to throw a rock. But when you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word hooper balo, which depicts something that is above and beyond anything that is normal, something that is exceeding or surpassing. It pictures an archer who aims his arrow at the target, but shoots way over the top. It depicts something beyond the range of anything considered normal, something unparalleled. God wanted to demonstrate his unparalleled riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. God said, I'm going to really show off my goodness in the lives of these people who began as being spiritually dead. I'm going to wake them up. I'm going to make them new. I'm going to show off my benevolence. In fact, in this verse, it talks about his grace in his kindness. That word kindness, the Greek word, which really describes benevolence. God wanted to demonstrate his benevolence. And in fact, when the verse says that he might show, the word show means to show off, to demonstrate, to openly display, to put on a big demonstration. God wants you and me to be trophies of his grace. He wants to show off his exceeding, surpassing, unbelievable, unimaginable riches of grace, his benevolence that he has shown to our lives. Wow. That's why when you come to verse 8, Paul goes on to say, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that of yourselves, it is the gift of God. <laughs> From beginning to end, it is a work of grace which God has done on our behalf. That's why verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. But look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The word workmanship, my friend, is the Greek word poiemo. The word poiemo describes a product, a thing made, something that is marvelous. It is exactly the word for a masterpiece. This word poiema. This word poiema is where you get the word for a poem. It's where you have the word poietes, the word for a poet, one who has a creative flair, one who has an artistic ability, 
one who is able to write something that is masterful or to create a piece of art that is just unimaginable. That is the word that is used in this verse, which means when God saved me and when God saved you, he put forth his best creative efforts to turn us into something magnificent, something magnificent. In fact, the verse goes on to say created in Christ Jesus. And the word created describes the creation of something from nothing, not something renewed or refashioned with old materials, but something brand spanking new, never existing before, not enhanced, not improved, not repaired, not restored, but something newly created and original. When the Bible says we are God's workmanship, it literally means we are God's masterpiece. Masterpiece. What an amazing thing God did with me and with you. We were spiritually dead. Dead. And God took dead people, quickened them with Christ, woke them up from spiritual death, gave them the Holy Spirit, created them brand new. He had to start all over again because there was nothing that could be repaired or fixed. We were created brand new in Christ Jesus, and today we are God's workmanship, which means we are God's masterpiece. We are a masterpiece of the grace of God. What he did in us, according to verse 7, is unparalleled. It surpasses anything that anyone could ever imagine. God showed his kindness, his benevolence to us in Christ when he made us brand new spanking new. We are trophies of the grace of God. And that's not all because 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, then he gave us the Holy Spirit. And today we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God actually lives inside us. What a work God has done in our lives. I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Do you really know what the Bible means when it says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? My friend, you really are the dwelling place for the Spirit of God, and that is amazing and powerful. In this fabulous 10-part series, You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit, Rick Renner unwraps all the intricacies of what the Bible means when it declares that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God put forth His best work when you were born again. And then God placed his greatest treasure deep inside you. In this series, you'll learn you are God's masterpiece. You are a repository of God's greatest treasure. You are sealed and guaranteed by God's spirit. You are filled with the riches of Christ. This life transforming 10 part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, A Life Ablaze. In this book, Rick lays out everything you need to live an intimate, uncompromising life and stay on fire with the Holy Spirit's power for years to come. You can do it, but you need to know how, and that is what you'll discover in this timely book. Order your copy today because it will help you throw the right fuels into your fire to get you burning again. Order your copy of A Life Ablaze today for only $18. Don't miss this special offer. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the book, A Life Ablaze. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner and right behind me through this wonderful park is one of our Moscow Good News Church satellite churches. You know, everyone needs a good church they can call their spiritual home. As a ministry, we're believing for revival of the Bible in people's lives. And to have a church you can call your home is so very important. For decades, we have been working in the countries of the former Soviet Union. And we have started churches in Riga, the capital of Latvia. Moscow, the capital of Russia. Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Every city where we have opened a church has brought its own similar and unique challenges, but the goal has always been the same, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
We have also started an online church that is touching people in countries we have never been to and people we could never reach. People all over the world need the gospel and we are so glad that our online church is an answer for them. After we dedicated the Moscow Good News Church building, we started taking churches to other regions of Moscow and now we're opening satellite churches all over this wonderful city. Moscow is huge and we need to take the gospel to as many people as possible in our wonderful city. One way to do this is by opening satellite churches so the people all over Moscow have a good spiritual home. If you're one of our partners, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Spreading the gospel is so important. People need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ just like you did one day. If you're not one of our partners, I want to invite you to become one. Would you please consider supporting us financially so we can continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the globe? It is so important. Please call or go online to renter.org to give. Through your generous financial support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives around the world. My friend, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing cheap about you. When God quickened you together with Christ, He made you brand spanking new. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, verse 10, that you are God's masterpiece. That's who you are. You are so marvelously made that God decided He would move into you. You became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm teaching you this week. And I want you to have the series, which is called You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. You need to know who God has made you to be. You're not who you used to be anymore. You now have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Order yours today at renner.org. And remember that it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which is called A Life Ablaze. I wrote this book because I know people want to stay on fire for Jesus to the end of their life. But sometimes people feel like they've lost their fire. Well, how do you rekindle it? How do you regain your fire? That's why I wrote this book. This book will help you regain the fire so you can burn like an inferno to the end of your life. And I want you to order your copy today. And remember that if you need prayer, we're here for you. And we want to pray with you to send us your email or call us. And this Friday, January the 22nd, we're having a special Renner family meeting online. We want you to join us. Go to our website, renner.org to see more information. It's going to be great. But Father, I thank you that we're not who we used to be. We're no longer spiritually dead. We are spiritually alive. And you've turned us into your masterpiece. We are trophies of grace. Help us to embrace it and celebrate it. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's power. And I'll see you in the next program. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.